Today we're going to talk about the introduction to microscopy. Here we can see on our next slide is a series of images. They're drawings from the atlas. But you can also note that they're labeled. So it's very easy to find things in your manual if you use your atlas because they are already labeled. Use your atlas. Use your atlas. Use your atlas. And the things we see here are the pancreas, with a lot of pink and blue, blood cells, the stomach, with the uh, parietal cells showing so nice and pink, and then the testis. And those will be the tissues that we will look at uh, today. Now getting started with microscopy, remember about curler illumination. There's five basic steps in curler illumination. The first thing you do is focus a specimen. Then you close the field diaphragm. Then you focus the condenser. You center the condenser. And then you open the field diaphragm again. So those are the different components of it. Again, you focus a specimen. You put the specimen in there and observe to see it. Then you close the field diaphragm so you can see the edges of the diaphragm uh, to allow you to focus the condenser. You focus the condenser with a little knob and now you might see it's a little bit off the center. So you use the center knobs around the side to center condenser. And then finally you open the field diaphragm right out of the side of view. Now before we talked about magnification, just increased size of image, resolution is the smallest distance between two points that can be distinguished. And we talked about the railroad tracks and how you lose resolution as you go down the railroad tracks. Now, in terms of calculating your resolution, it's a constant time to wavelength divided by the numerical aperture. And for light microscopy, it's about 0.25 micrometers. But for electron microscopy, it is much smaller. It's 0.1 nanometers. And that's due to the fact that the wavelength of electrons is much smaller. So if the wavelength of light is on the top of the equation and you've got a much smaller number, you're going to have a smaller resolution number. Here we see the, uh, the uh, tissue as you would see it in the histologic manual in the atlas uh, showing you the red blood cells and white blood cells. And we see it's a fill, a monocyte, a basophil, lymphocytes. A few more that we're seeing here. And this is one slide, slide 115, which has the, the, the real image that we'll be viewing. Uh, many of those circles that you'll see in there are, white, are red blood cells, but there are some white blood cells in there that are blue, and you can see the nuclei. The very smallest one are the lymphocytes. The larger ones are the monocytes. Uh, and the ones that are libellated with uh, kind of gray with uh, dark uh, series of dots in there are the neutrophils. And here we can, next slide, we can see an, another set of neutrophils and a monocyte with a lot of, of red blood cells in through there. Uh, more monocytes, uh, uh, neutrophils, and a, and a lymphocyte with many blood cells. Here we see a neutrophil and an eosinophil, so you see big eosinophilic granules located uh, in this cell. Uh, here a little bit of a basophil, maybe, and some neutrophils that we can, uh, we can see. Again, neutrophils, eosinophils. Now as we look at the tissue, here we see an atlas view of tissue, and actually a picture of the tissue too, where uh, you can see that the pancreas is composed of different structures. It has ducts, it has glands, it has connective tissue running through there. And so if you look at a slide 158, you can see uh, various uh, groups of small cells, little grapes that are around a little lumen. And each one of those grapes is composed of a cell with a nucleus that's in the center. And we can see the light staining material, which is really uh, the uh, Alex Longerhan. Again, you can see the, the Alex Longerhan. Uh, and in this particular slide, 
158, you can see the base of the cells, the cytoplasm, is blue. But as you go to the lumen of the cell, which you can hardly see the lumen in the pancreas, uh, you see red granules. These red granules are secretory granules that are going to be secreted into the lumen. Because this is part of the exocrine gland, namely that uh, secretions are secreted in a duct as opposed to in the endocrine gland when they're secreted into the blood system. Here we see the pancreas of a monkey with telutinin blue. If you go to a higher mag of that, you can see that the secretory granules near the apex, near the lumen, are very dark and dense. With telutinin blue, you look for the size and the density of things. Dense things are very dark, and that's what you see. In contrast, you see the nuclei is not that not that dark and you see the connective tissue around there and if you really got a keen eye you might be able to see some ducts I don't see one there the next uh, tissue is a piece of testis and this is a, a atlas view of the testis it's got a capsule around it which is a pink thing we see at the top then it has a series of little tubes these are the similar for tubules that produce sperm Sperm goes from those to the reedy test of tubules that go out through a series of excurrent duct system. If you look at uh, UT slide 165, you can see uh, the, the human testis there. Uh, in between the tubes, you see a group of cells. These are leading cells that produce testosterone. But inside the tube, you see a host of cells, some that are big and round, some that are small and round, some that are more bullet-shaped which are the, the uh, mature spermatids that we're seeing. Here again, we see a telutinin blue of the testis. It's happened to be the human testis again, showing you uh, blood vessels, uh, Leydig cells, uh, a host of germ cells in the tubules, the lumen of the tubule, and Leydig cells in the interstitium. The Leydig cells have a very big nucleus with a very big nucleolus, uh, and in this case, we see there's some granularity in there. There are some lipid that's stored in these Leydig cells. Now, slide 19709 shows you that tissue is largely transparent until it's stained. It, that's what tissue is. It's transparent. And here you can see where the stain did not stain all the tissue. And you can see through the area that there was no stain. Again, you can see that you have to literally stain the tissue to be able to, and it's the differential stain, so you can see the surrounding tissue around the cells pretty well, which you cannot see it on the right side that has not been stained. Now sometimes when you look at unstained tissue, you can see that there are some cells that are stained. Here we can see some mast cells or granules. This is after staining, you can see the granules uh, even better. So we have tubules on the outside, uh, interstitium in between. Again, mast cells in the interstitium that we see. This is another view uh, up from the atlas uh, on the other digestive tract. And it starts out with the, with the trachea, well, the esophagus, and then from esophagus it goes to the stomach. So when you get, so you have strathlonic squamous in the beginning and then you have simple cube, uh, columnar. And here we see slide 145, which has the fundic stomach in there. And if you look inside there, you can see some big cells, light staining cytoplasm, and a, a spherical nucleolus, nucleus, and those are the parietal cells. The ones in between, if you look in the uh, right-hand corner at the bottom, you can see some cells are shaped like columns, and then one is shaped like a pyramid. The pyramid is a parietal cell, uh, produces hydrochloric acid, and the other cells are chief cells, which produce uh, pepsinogen. We can see that again with the fundic stomach of a rabbit, and we can see uh, the parietal cells have a host of mitochondria around them. On the surface of the cell, we have the surface mucus cells uh, as well uh, on the surface. Now, one of the things that we want to do in terms of microscopy is to be able to recognize sizes of things and get a feel for the different things with different sizes. And here we see a series of micrographs that are, that are arranged in 
increase in magnification. And what you want to do is compare membranes. And if you look at the far right, you can see the lipid bilayer of membranes, and then you can see some membranes as you go to the middle. Uh, 4C has fairly well-defined membranes, and then less so as you go to the lower magnifications. Also ribosomes, you can see the nice ribosomes in 4C, whopping ribosomes in 6A, some ribosomes in 12A, but you can hardly see the ribosome, just granularity is all you see. And then the other thing is mitochondria. And here we can see the mitochondria. Uh, I don't see any in 16A, but there are some in 7. Uh, we also, 2B. Uh, but you can see the mitochondria, which are larger structures. So you can't see membranes in some of them, but you can see the uh, uh, mitochondria. And so here we see uh, this is uh, a host of white blood cells that we can uh, see there. And you see ribosomes are increasing in size in this group of cells. Then we see ribosomes a little larger, even larger. Here we see microtubules. And the ribosomes are even larger there with... Uh, with uh, and so if, if we want to look at uh, ribosomes, look at rough and the plasma reticulum, you can get a feel for what the size of the ribosome is. And then finally, in higher magnification, you can see uh, the lipid bilayer. Uh, as well. So here we can see the magnification 9,000, 13,000, 60,000 all the way up to 200,000 magnification. Another thing we want to keep in mind is there are different types of microscopy, electron microscopy. There's conventional electron microscopy like, like it's what we've just seen where you have an image uh, that uh, interferes with electrons going through and that makes a negative view of it like like an x-ray. That is your typical conventional electron microscopy. There's also a carbon replica electron microscopy where you have a, a carbon film that goes on the tissue that takes the shape of the tissue. You dissolve away the tissue and you're only looking at the replica. So you're only looking at the replica, not the real tissue. And then finally, the other type of way is scanning electron microscopy where you actually look at the surface of, of cells. What you're looking at there too is a coating uh, on the surface and the coat corresponds to the differences in the tissue. So this is a carbon replica of two cells. You can even see the junctions between adjacent cells. This is a lymphocyte. You can see the nucleus in the center. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the two uh, layers of the nucleus as well as cytoplasm and a plasma membrane. This one is a uh, scan electron microscopy of the uh, respiratory system. You see ciliated cells and uh, goblet cells making secretions in through there. This is another scanning electron microscopy view of the kidney. So here we can see the different uh, glomeruli with the, uh, uh, with the corpuscle with the glomerulus inside there and also the different tubules that we have. So in terms of conventional microscopy, we see those two. Uh, scanning EM uh, is these other two. And carbon replica electron microscopy. So remember, use your atlas because there's a lot of tips in the atlas. In fact, you should be able to use your atlas and go through the manual and not even have to look at the slides if you did that on your atlas. Okay, that's pretty much it for Introduction to Sales.